Greetings, my friends. Jimmer Linz here with your Source Filmmaker Tip of the Day. Today is Tip of the Day number 57. Thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. In today's tip, I'm going to show you how you can adjust some of the properties of an individual model and hide some of the things on it that might not be trivially easy to do so. And uh, by way of example, I mean, let's say that you wanted a soldier model without the grenades, or you wanted the grenades to be elsewhere in his hands, like, say, in Meet the Soldier. Uh, a lot of people have already figured this out, but if you haven't, or if it never occurred to you, here's how you can do things like that. If you'll notice when you, um, I've spawned these uh, animation sets already, uh, if you press control and move your hand, move your mouse over the various nodes on a model, uh, it will tell you uh, what they are. And so we have prop grenade top and prop grenade bottom. And I can actually select these and we can just move them away from where they are. We can grab them and drag them drag them out of frame if we want. I can just drag them off and, and, and away from the frame so that they're completely out of view entirely, which is one, one way to do this. And so now we have a soldier with no grenades, or if I wanted to um, place them in his hands, I can do that as well. I can grab one and put one in each hand and uh, make him uh, smash them together, just like in Meet the Soldier. Uh, and that is one way to do that. You'll notice also that there are other ways to affect the look of a, of a model. And uh, if you right-click an animation set of a TF2 model, you'll see that there's set skin and set body. And setting the skin will change things like the color. So zero will be red, one will be blue, two will be red uber-charged, uh, three will be blue uber-charged, and I believe that four is yeah blood-spattered. So we've got blood-spattered red and... Uh, I'm not sure what that is. I don't think I've ever actually seen that in game. Uh, anyway, but uh, then there's uh, there's the body as well. And on some of these things, like if you set the body on here to two, it's a helmetless body. And this is something you can do if you want to put a hat on or something like that. Uh, so that's another way, um, using these presets to change the look and feel of some of these models. Just like with the grenades, though, if you want, you can grab the soldier's helmet and uh, move it off of his head. If you decided for some reason you didn't want to hide it or you wanted him to, say, lose it and have it fall off when he falls down or have somebody take it away from him and play keep away with it. You know, there's all kinds of things you might be able to do with that. And... Um, so it's important to note that these things are individual models of their own, and while they are attached to the soldier's animation set, they are manipulatable uh, completely separate from him. Uh, so I could take it and move it away and uh, apply a zero preset to it, and he would move independently of it. Uh, and with the medic, I brought him in here because he has some interesting features on his. There's, the, uh, of course, his backpack. If you wanted a medic without a backpack, well, you can just grab it and move it away. Uh, and the medic has several uh, bodies here, which a couple of them are interesting. I, I think that this one was um, a special one created for, uh, I'm guessing that this might have been made for uh, Meet the Medic, although I'm not sure. However, it doesn't seem to be completely finished or there's something wrong with the texturing. I'm not certain what, uh, but obviously it looks a little weird. Uh, but his second one, his uh, second body, it's pretty much the same. The only difference I've been able to detect between body one and uh, body zero, or body two and body zero, is a slight difference in the uh, uh, in the in the gloves. But at any rate, there none of these bodies have a uh, the backpack gone. So if you want to get rid of the backpack, well, you'll have to grab it and just drag it out of scene. You can you can even do things like just drag it under the floor if you want, just remove it entirely and just get it out of the scene. Uh, you know, and that, that's a there's a couple of ways. You know, that's a couple of ways to accomplish that. But again, like if you want the characters to be more alive, so that like you know, say the medic stumbles and he loses his metagun, or it falls down, or he drops his backpack. You know, think of it in context like that. Uh, and so most of the TF2 models have some sort of animatable uh, elements or pieces to them. Uh, and of course, the medic is kind of interesting because he's got all of these uh, uh, bits of his coat that are animatable individually. So if you have seen the man versus machine um, uh, trailer, then you have seen that the medic was standing there and his coat was flapping very, very coolly in the wind. And so if you wanted to, to create that effect, you, know, you, could, you could animate these props and make his coat flap, for example, or you can do other things with it, however you feel is necessary. But for what it's worth, 
That's how you can manipulate individual elements of an already spawned TF2 model and change their skins and bodies um, if you weren't already familiar with that. So I hope this was useful to some folks. I am your host, Jimmer Linz. I thank you for tuning in and for subscribing to my YouTube channel. It is always a pleasure to, uh, to be your host for these tips of the day. I look forward to bringing you the next one on Monday. And in the meantime, enjoy your weekend and enjoy using Source Filmmaker.